delegates had been told, you can only move at certain times. And a Georgia delegate, a Georgia delegate got up from his seat and started for the aisle. He has a delegate badge on. As I understand it, he was told by somebody at the end of the aisle, you can't get up now. And to my opinion, quite rightly, he said, I'm a delegate. Here's my delegate badge, here are my credentials. I'm a delegate and I'm gonna walk around a little bit. They said, no. He, he basically said, to hell with you, I'm gonna do it. So he walked, so he started walking. I didn't see all that in the beginning. This filled in later. By the time I saw him, here was a picture I saw. I'm standing in, in, in an aisle, one of the main aisles, and I see coming a man with a Georgia delegate badge. He clearly was a delegate. Had a badge on and everything. And there were some people in civilian clothes, not police clothes, who had him by the arms, had his feet virtually off the floor, and they were quickly trying to escort him off the floor. This is a story. The delegate seems to be, he's either being subjected to some kind of thuggery, or he's being hustled off the floor for some reason. And all kinds of things, you know, what is this man an imposter? Has he assaulted somebody? What's going on here? And so, in full rig, we had earphones and radio transmission and a microphone. I basically asked the reporter's question, try to, of, uh, sir, who are you? What's going on? What's happening here? The goal of the people who had him was to get him off the floor and out of there as quickly as possible. There was a, a gate, an exit uh, turnstile with an anti-fame person. All this is happening very quickly, but I can see, well, they're trying to get him out that gate, and to get him out that gate, that turnstile, I can't talk to him. So I kept putting the microphone up, I burst the microphone away, elbowed me out of the way, so I kind of get in the middle of him, and I tried to stand in front so they'd have to slow down at least to say, tell me, sir, what's going on? And at that point, having elbowed one thing or another, then a guy delivered a, a very effective punch. I think this guy had some boxing training because he brought a punch up, you know, up on his dude with an elbow in right off his lips, hit me in the solar plexus and knocked me down, and they whisked this guy on out. We were on the air. What happened was Jimmy Wald, who was a floor director in the anchor booth, which is high above all this with Walter Cronkite, was using his binoculars. And he saw me get knocked down and said to Walter, if something happened down there with Dan. So Walter Cronkite came to me just about the time, uh, just before I got hit. We had no clue as to what was happening. I mean, they whisked the guy out the turnstile and he was gone. Walter talked to me. We then started trying to find out what was going on. But, of course, the, the big fog envelops. At one point, much later, the Secret Service uh, did look into it. And the next night at the convention, they brought a man, uh, they pointed a man out to me, who said, you know, we basically think this, this is the guy who hit you. They had studied the videotape one thing or the other and said, you know, do you want to um, bring charges on him. And I thought about it for a half a second. I said, let me check with my bosses. And I said, look, it was last night. It's beyond us. There's enough chaos. I mean, the whole city, not the whole city, but large sections of the city were exploding with difficulty. The convention itself was careening near out of control. And yes, the whole world was watching. And so I basically said, well, no, I don't think bringing charges against him. I just assumed he didn't get my area code again, but uh, I don't want to bring charges against him.